On October 11th, 2020, the Los Angeles Lakers won the NBA title. We can all agree on that, right? It wasn't some kind of mass hysteria we fell victim to, or some fever dream that we collectively came up with so that we could live in a world where J.R. Smith is a two-time NBA champion. I ask because it's important we establish common ground up front and figure out the facts. Because we've gotten some space from it now, and I think it's a good time to litigate the weirdest NBA championship of all time. So did the 2020 bubble title actually count or what? If you have a working internet connection, you know why that question has a little oomph to it. The 2020 finals spawned the phrase Mickey Mouse Ring and all subsequent memes that have escaped the realm of sports and permeated their way into the broader internet culture. It's a reductionist insult, a disqualifier. It means that the thing in question was inauthentic, undeserved, rigged, fraudulent, or otherwise fake. The people who tell you that the 2020 championship doesn't count do so with some decent ammunition behind their claim. First, and most obviously, 2020 was a really weird year in general. You know, because of the pandemic, and how the world basically shut down, and how the NBA had to finish their season in a bubble, not letting anyone in or out, playing their games in Orlando at ESPN's facility in Disney World. That was weird. And weird shit happened in the bubble. Announcers were calling games over Zoom. TJ Warren became better than Michael Jordan for a week. Dudes were shotgunning beers like they were college kids. And Lou Williams left the bubble and went to a strip club in Atlanta. It was weird all around. Not to mention the election, BLM, the recession, and all of the other stuff going on in the world at large. And as for the Lakers themselves, they had a relatively easy path to the title. After beating the Blazers in the first round, they faced the Rockets and playoff James Harden, which, you know, enough said. A young Nuggets team who made the conference finals because the Clippers are the Clippers and blew a 3-1 lead. And the five-seeded Heat in the finals. You wouldn't exactly call it a gauntlet in hindsight. So I do totally understand the argument against it. Have I mentioned how weird everything was? It was a championship won in the most atypical situation under circumstances that have no parallel. Who knows what would have happened in a regular NBA playoffs, right? But wait, I hear those clickety clackety keyboards, those creamy thwacky keystrokes from the Laker apologists already. Settle down, partner, because I hear you. And even worse, I kind of agree with you. Because the fact is that every other team in the bubble had the same chance as the Lakers. Everybody was on the same playing field. There was quite literally no advantage. Nobody had home court. Nobody benefited from an expensive stadium or some luxurious locker room. There was no travel, no fans, and nothing else to do. Every team and player was in that bubble to do one thing, win a championship. For some, like the Heat and the Lakers, that was enough. For others, like the Clippers, it wasn't. And don't let old Lemon Pepper Lou fool you. There was no talk in the moment that this championship wouldn't count. The Clippers didn't lose because they were seeing the board from 10,000 feet and decided to pull some master move by not trying. They lost because they're losers. I have a ton of sympathy for the players who went stir crazy or felt uncomfortable in the bubble. They were away from their homes and many of them away from families for weeks and months on end. Sure they're rich and sure they were in a resort, but I'm sure it still sucked. However, it was as even a playing field as there has ever been in playoff history. And we got really awesome games and performances that mattered. The teams who seemed to prioritize playoff and championship success and team culture were by and large the ones who had the most success, like the Lakers and the Heat. And today's sponsor, Factor. Are you living under a rock? Do you not know about Factor by now? Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your door. All you gotta do is take the meal, give it a poke, and heat it up. I mean, how much more convenient could it get? They also have a ton of really delicious and convenient add-ons, not just easy and delicious meals. I recently took care of my parents' cats, who can be a real handful. I'm not always the best about eating breakfast, and I can get a little cranky when I'm tired. So what did I do to keep up with them? Have a protein shake and a cold brew? Uh, how about I have both at the same time? Factor's Cold Brew Latte Protein Shake has 110 milligrams of caffeine and 18 grams of plant-based protein. Let me tell you, it's, it's the, the good, good stuff. stuff. 
To get started, head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code CLAYTON50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code CLAYTON50 at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month of orders. Say what you want about the Lakers before and since, but the 2020 Lakers were a juggernaut. LeBron was the runner-up for MVP, Anthony Davis was first-team everything and the runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year, and role players like Kuzma, Alex Caruso, and KCP were huge contributors all year long. When the season stopped, the Lakers had a 49-14 and record, a projected 63-win total. A really, really damn good team. They lost a few when they came back to the bubble, having wrapped up the one seed, and only finished with a .73 win percentage. Better than other recent champions, like the Raptors, Bucks, Nuggets, 18, and 22 Warriors. And yeah, the Jimmy Butler Heat made the finals as a five seed. You've got me there. What a fluke. Wait, what's that? Jimmy Butler took the Heat to the finals again three years later? As the eight seed? Huh, I guess it wasn't a fluke. Both teams showed up, we got some great games, and the better team ended up winning. You know, how most final series go? Because let's be real, this whole bubble title Mickey Mouse ring shit is because it's LeBron and the Lakers, right? Like 80% of it is because LeBron won another ring, put himself even further up the ladder, and even further established himself next to Jordan, right? And because it was the Lakers who are really fun to hate and shit on. And this was the perfect opportunity to poke holes in the achievement and downplay it. like. If the Heat had won, you Mickey Mouse dorks would have never shut up about how the Lakers choked and Miami was just so mentally tough. And sure, LeBron hasn't done himself any favors by filleting himself, talking about how he's the GOAT because this was one of the two most difficult championships ever. It only further incentivizes the people that already don't like him to discredit the ring and act like it doesn't count. Those dorks are wrong. The bubble title counts. But how much does it count? It's a good question, because not every championship is created equal. Yes, they're all important, and they all matter, but some of them matter more than others. Some of them carry a certain amount of weight to them. So how much does this one weigh? We've already established what someone who doesn't like LeBron would say. Someone from Boston or Chicago or any other team in the East who is good in the last 20 years. They'll tell you, it doesn't weigh jack shit. And if you ask one of those sickos with a Stan account who defend him like it's their job and act like they're a PR firm, they'll tell you that it definitively made him the GOAT and that it was the most difficult thing an athlete has ever done. But you're asking me? You want to know what I think? Oh, thank you, you little scamp. Well, I think on the spectrum of how much you like LeBron, I come down on the side that likes LeBron. Not as much as LeBron does, mind you, but I think it's another major accomplishment on the resume of perhaps the greatest player of all time. It's not leading the resume, though. I don't have a list of the heaviest, most weighty championships ever, but if I did, this one would be in the top, like, 75th percentile. It's not 84 or 98, it's certainly no 2016. And of all the championships that have ever been won, this is the championship that deserves an asterisk. Not because it was easy and not to say that it doesn't count, but because the bubble was just so different from anything else that happened before. And isn't that what an asterisk is supposed to signify? That this one is different? When the finals was over, more than anything, it felt like a sigh of relief that the NBA had a champion and everyone got to go home. There were no fans, there was no parade, there wasn't that big feeling of catharsis that makes a championship resonate and matter and stick in our heads. That's one of the biggest reasons that sports succeed and are interesting. We get wrapped up in the stories and the mythology and the action and the strategy, but without the people there to feel it and celebrate it, a little bit of the stuff that makes it special gets lost. Yes, the 2020 championship counted. Yes, it added to the greatness of LeBron and AD and all the other Lakers including and especially J.R. Smith. It is a meaningful accomplishment that does and will stand the test of time. We can put all those arguments to bed. But it can't be overstated or forgotten that that championship was also pretty damn weird.